mFiles is an enterprise content management system that can be customized to suit your needs. mFiles can be installed on Windows computers and can also be accessed via the web and mobile devices for a zero footprint cloud application or combination of both. The full application is integrated into the Windows Explorer functionality, so it gives users a familiar look and feel for navigation. What you see here is the mFiles home screen when you first log in. The main workspace offers quick access to a variety of frequently used items, such as documents or items you may have recently accessed, items that are assigned to you for completion, and items that you have checked out to work on. The pinned section to the right can be used as a virtual bulletin board for saving links to your own personal collection of items or searches that are most important to you. Items can be pinned or unpinned as your work dictates. Shortcuts to these areas are available at the top as you navigate throughout the application, and your workspace is customizable to your preference, so you can show or hide panels as desired. The Browse section contains views, which are pre-configured saved searches that are dynamically updated based on the metadata, also known as assigned properties or keywords, of the documents. Some of these come included with the application, while others are customized based on your requirements. At its core, mFiles document management is based on what a document is rather than where it resides in your system. This means you never have to remember where you saved something as long as you know any of its assigned properties or keywords. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you need to look at someone's emergency contact information. There are a few ways to get to it. First, let's take a look in the Personnel Documents folder. Here we have a listing of different document types, and emergency contact information is where we want to go. Next, we are presented with a list of employees who have an emergency contact form on file, and we need Lucy's, so we'll go there. And here we have her form. Once we click on it, we'll see the metadata for this document in the right panel. These are the keywords and properties that allowed us to drill down into the saved search to find her form. Let's talk for a minute about the metadata, or the keyword properties on the documents. The kinds of keyword fields that are available on each document is fully customizable. Some system standard metadata fields, such as created date or last modified, will be applied across the board, while other metadata fields can be applied as necessary. Let's go back to the home screen. We've seen one way that we can get to Lucy's emergency contact form, but let's look at a different one. This time, we'll go into our employee documents active section. Now this shows us all of our active employees right off the bat. Here's Lucy, so we'll go into her file. And here we are seeing all of Lucy's documents together, whereas before we had narrowed our search first to only emergency contact documents. This time we've started with the employee filter, and so we are seeing all of Lucy's available documents together. Here is her emergency contact form. It's the same document, it's not saved in two different places in the system, it's just two different ways to access it. Let's go back to the home screen, and instead of going into any of these saved searches, let's just do a quick keyword search up here in the search bar. It's a lot like Google. You can just type in keywords, and mFiles will do the heavy lifting to find this document. So here we have Lucy's emergency contact form, and you'll notice that mFiles has highlighted the keywords in the file name, and if we look over here in the metadata panel, the keywords are highlighted here as well. We can also click Preview to see a quick HTML version of the file, and you'll see the search items are highlighted here in the contents of the file as well. mFiles will do this for any kind of searchable file type, such as Word or Excel documents, as well as searchable PDFs. As you can see, there are a variety of ways to get to the documents that are important to you. How you access the documents will depend on your own preferences and work styles, and we can customize mFiles to work how you work best. Let's talk about ways to add documents to mFiles. Depending on what's most convenient for you, there are a variety of ways to get documents into the system. First of all, let's say you have a handful of documents already saved somewhere, maybe on your desktop or in a network folder. We'll just select the documents we'd like to add and drag them right into the application. mFiles then will prompt us to fill in the metadata card for the document so that we can add the associated keywords that we can use to find this document in the future. 
the first property that we'll assign is the class, which is generally known as the document type. This is the top level categorization of the document that we are adding to M files. We can either scroll through the list of available classes, or we can just begin typing if we already know what the class should be, and the list will narrow down the options based on what we've entered. This is a performance evaluation, so we'll select this class. You'll notice that the metadata fields changed once we selected a class. This is because the properties assigned to each document class are customized based on that document type, so that different document types can have different keyword properties. In this case, we just have a couple of properties to add, for the employee and the date. Clicking Create now saves and checks the document into M files. Another option to add documents is from within a Microsoft Office program itself, such as Word or Excel. Because M files is fully integrated with Microsoft Office, we can save documents without having to interact directly with the M files application. If you'll notice here in this job description, we have an M files tab here on the ribbon. And selecting that gives the option to save to mfiles. We just need to select the appropriate vault. I have a few options here in my demo environment. Typically there's only one option here in a live installation. And mfiles then prompts for the metadata for this document. Just like any other method, we just need to classify the document and enter the appropriate keyword properties. and then click Create to save it into the mFiles database. Closing the document completes the check-in process. So now others can view this document in the mFiles vault. Templates are another way to add documents to mFiles. Most of us are familiar with using common saved versions of Word or Excel documents as a template to create documents that are used over and over and over again. But there's always the risk that someone will accidentally save over the template version of the file, and then it has to be recreated to strip out the customized information so it can be used as a template again. In mFiles, designing a document as a template means that you don't ever have to worry about saving over the template version. mFiles will prompt you to create a new document from the template automatically. Let's see this in action with the personnel action form I have pinned to my section here. When I open the template, Instead of going to the template itself, mFiles knows that I want to create a new document based on the template, so I'm presented with the now familiar metadata card right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and enter my employee information and date, and you'll notice down here in the left corner, the default option is to open this document for editing. This makes sense, this, since this is a brand new document we're crafting, and most likely we'll want to open it right away and finish working on it before moving on. Now when I click Create, that will generate the document in Microsoft Word. And here's my document. One item to note is that the document has been pre-populated with a couple of fields, the employee name and today's date. This is because the mFiles template has been configured to pull this information into the file from the metadata we just entered for this new document. This is part of the integration with Microsoft Office and is a powerful feature that can help standardize documents and reduce data entry. Another option for adding documents to mFiles is directly from Outlook. Many of us spend a large portion of our day in Outlook, and oftentimes we receive documents in our email that we will then want to add to mFiles, and it would be most convenient to be able to add those items without ever having to leave Outlook, and this is possible due to the integration with Microsoft Office. Here's a vacation request that came in from an employee, and I'd like to go ahead and take this form and add it to mFiles. You'll notice in my list of folders here on the left side, I've got an mFiles section and this is connected to all the vaults in my demo environment right now. So I can go ahead and simply take this attachment and drag it into the folder for my demo vault. mFiles now will prompt me for metadata, just like any other document, so I can enter in the required information.
After clicking Create, we can flip over to M Files and see that this document now shows up in my Recently Accessed by Me section because I just created this document. Finally, we do have the option of configuring a network folder that is connected directly to the M Files application. Perhaps you are still regularly using a scanner to scan documents onto your network, and you'd like these documents to be automatically ingested into M Files without having to direct that process yourself. To demonstrate that, I'm going to take this W4 that I have on my desktop and add that file to my scan folder. Now behind the scenes, mFiles is regularly pulling this folder for the presence of new documents. When it finds this document, it's going to not only add it to mFiles, but it will run OCR on it to make it a searchable PDF file, and then it will read specific areas on the document to assign the relevant metadata when it saves the document. This can minimize the amount of manual data entry that has to take place after the documents are imported into mFiles. So let's go find our new W4 that should be added to Serena's file. And here we find it. And notice mFiles has applied the employee name and date to this file already. Configuring permissions in mFiles is very important to make sure only the right people see the documents they are supposed to see. In this demo environment, we have permissions set up for two groups of people. One group that can only see personnel type documents, such as managers, and another group that is able to see HR confidential documents as well as the personnel documents. Let's see this in action. First, let's look at Lucy's file with all of her documents. Notice right now we're logged in as an HR demo user who has access to the personnel and confidential documents. So we see all of Lucy's documents, including the results of her background check and her drug test, which are confidential documents. Now let's see what it looks like to log in as a manager. First, we can see right away that the views are a little different. The manager doesn't see the view for confidential documents. Now let's go into Lucy's file. And here we see her documents, but we don't see that the confidential documents, like her background check and her drug test results. All we see are the release forms, but not the results themselves. This is just one example of how mFiles can ensure documents are only visible to the right people. It's important to not only be able to store documents and data in mFiles, but you want to be able to use that data as well as be easily accessible. Customizable views can harness your data so that you always have what you need at your fingertips. For example, in this demo environment, we've configured a section of views called Reports, which contain a lot of useful information that you might need. Not only can we look into views that give us data on employees that might have actions that need to be taken, such as this 90-day report that indicates when a new hire's employee benefits kick in, but sometimes we need to see specific data and maybe export it, such as in this address, phone, and email information view. You can export the data from any view for further action or manipulation. Workflows in mFiles can help you work smarter, not harder, by taking advantage of a wide variety of automated routing, notifications, and assignment features. Workflows can be as simple or as complex as they need to be to line up with your business processes and even streamline them for increased efficiency. Let's look at a common process for reviewing candidate resumes. But before we even start in mFiles, let's see how we might automate getting those resumes into mFiles in the first place. Perhaps you have an email folder set up already in your Outlook where you collect all the resumes that come in. Through the Outlook integration, we can connect that folder to mFiles so that you never even need to interact with the emails yourself. They will automatically be entered into mFiles and kick off the workflow. Here I have an email ready to send that has a resume attached. I'm going to send this off and we'll watch as the email shows up in my resumes folder to be ingested into mFiles. Now let's switch to mFiles and look in the view that shows us the resumes in the candidate review process. Here's the resume I've just sent in. Notice that we've configured mFiles to save both the email and the attachment as a connected file, so they are never separated from each other. 
and looking at the metadata shows that it has been entered into the received state. It's my job to review this person's resume and figure out what position they're applying for, who the hiring manager is going to be, and whether to advance this person as a candidate for interview. Once I've done my review and I decide to advance this candidate, I'm going to select candidate from my workflow options on the left. And this will send an assignment to the hiring manager to move forward with interviewing. At any step in this process, the candidate can also be disqualified, which will move them into an automatic retention state, which can then delete the resume after the retention period has been satisfied. Let's switch over and see what the hiring manager sees when they get this assignment. The resume now shows up in the Assign to Me section, and there is a description on the resume that tells me how to move forward. My options are either to recommend for hire or disqualify. I'm going to complete my interview and recommend for hire. The resume is no longer assigned to me, so let's switch back to the HR manager to keep moving forward. Back on the home screen, the resume is now assigned to the HR team. And we have a new assignment to run the background check, finalize the salary, and extend the offer of employment. Let's go ahead and extend the offer. Now we have a new assignment that's dependent on whether or not the offer is accepted. If the offer is accepted, we need to go ahead and create the employee object in mFiles. So this resume can now be tagged to their file. We're going to go ahead and create the employee in mFiles. And now we can save the resume as it's tagged to this employee's file. And we can go ahead and mark it as hired. And now we have a new employee to onboard, which is another common business process that we can configure and automate in mFiles.